Good morning. Uh, welcome to another webinar, Tago webinar about uh, Visco. Today we'll be talking more about the um, Visco or viscosity in the confectionery industry. Okay, confectionery industry um, can cover different areas, including uh, candy, chocolate manufacturing. Um, so this is. Um, this is like a quick overview that would apply to the different products. If you have any questions about a specific product, you can email us and we'll be glad to help you with the, any details you need. Okay. Um, so, uh, as I was just saying, uh, viscosity, um, the, the topics that this video is going to be uh, is applicable to is uh, things like chocolates, fillings, candy, uh, jellies, caramel, or coatings. Um, viscosity and confectionery properties. Uh, viscosity is essential for the confectionery industry. Um, not only does this property guarantee the performance of the final product, if it's the final product that you're working with, um, but it also guarantees the proper flow throughout production. Um, especially for the big companies, um, you need to monitor the viscosity of your product as you go from raw material to your final product. So viscosity is, uh, yeah, is monitored from the start to the end of production, and then even after the end of production, the the, the way the your customer will relate or experience the product you made. Um, viscosity will be important for all stages. Um, so whether it's like monitoring viscosity for the flow, as in going through the pipes or bags or nozzles, or the way you ex uh, or the way you expect them to set in their molds. Um, so sometimes you'll be pouring a product, a, a jam, a jelly, a chocolate in different molds to mold them to a certain shape. Viscosity is also important for there, uh, for that because a uh, high viscosity product might not mold as well as a medium viscosity or a low viscosity product. Okay, um, controlling the viscosity of your confectionery products is essential. A viscosity is important role is important for the role uh, that your confectionery product is expected to take on. Um, so some products you'll be making are, are end products, the products that will be consumed. Um, some are not exactly the end product, but they they have a role to play. For example, if you're manufacturing a coating, like a chocolate coating, a caramel coating, um, a, a, a type of coating, um, a low viscosity will ensure that that product that you're making will cover an area evenly. And if you're manufacturing fillings or making fillings or toppings, then a high viscosity will ensure that it stays in place. It even plays a key role in mouthfeel, like how it would feel in your mouth when you're consuming it, when you're eating it. Okay. Um, so today we're going to be talking about two products, but the videos that we're going to show is only of the visco. So Tago has two viscometers. Uh, the the Visco, which is the portable one, and the Visco BL, which is the benchtop version. Okay. Um, for each of them, well, they're using different spindles and they have different accessories. Um, but in general, um, this applies to the Visco, the smaller one. Um, for a low viscosity, you'll be choosing this smaller beaker and um, higher speed the wider spindle and, like I mentioned, smaller beaker. Um, if you have a higher viscosity, then you'll be using a lower speed, a thinner spindle and the large beaker. Okay, And I, uh, the reason I mentioned that this is applicable, applicable for the Visco, which is this one, is because the Visco BL is, is standard. It uses a 500 milliliter um, container as a standard, so there's no different options for containers the visco does have two different options okay 
And um, you'll also need, if you're using, which is the part that we're covering today, if you're going to be using the temperature controller for the Visco, um, you'll be using a small beaker only. So here we mentioned that you have two beaker options, um, but if you're going to be using the temperature controller, it's the volume of the small beaker only, 50 milliliters. Okay. And the way you would choose your accessories, um, if it's the temperature controller, then you only have one beaker, you don't have two, but you also have three different spindles to choose from, and you also have an RPM to choose from. So the user manual has this very uh, nice table that tells you the combination of RPM and spindle. So a uh, type of spindle at a different RPM is for a specific um, viscosity. For example, if I choose an A1 spindle uh, at an RPM of 2.5, then that's reading about, or that setting is for a 36,000 um, CP viscosity. So um, the way you would choose your spindle is depending on, uh, well, your, the way you choose your viscosity and RPM is depending on the viscosity of your product. So if you have a product that's 10,000 CP, then you would look for 10,000 CP on this table. Uh, for example, it's here. Then you would be choosing the A2 spindle for that and an RPM of 30. Okay. If you're going to be using the Visco BL, which is the benchtop viscometer, you would be um, using a similar table. You also have three different spindles, the SVL1, SVL2, SVL3, and different RPMs. So the same thing, if you're looking at 10,000 uh, CP, um, then 10,000 would be possibly the SLV spindle, SLV2 spindle, at an RPM of 2.5. Okay. Um, the Visco temperature controller, which is the main, I, the main subject of, of today's webinar, um, is important for maintaining your product of a specific temperature while you're reading. If the temperature changes, then the properties of your product changes. Um, and then one of those properties that will be will change is the, the viscosity. So keeping the temperature of your sample stable and at the right temperature is very important. The visco temperature controller has a temperature range of 5 to 90. So that's enough to cover most of your confectionery needs. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the temperature controller fits both uh, the Visco, which we see here to the left, and the Vis Visco BL, which we see here to the right. Okay, it's the same. It's the same controller with slightly different accessories to fit one or the other. Okay, and this range uh, should be enough to cover for chocolates, fillings, candies, jellies, and coatings. If you need higher than ninety. We do have a different accessory, I don't have it here, but we do have a different accessory for that. Um, it's, you would be controlled via a water pipe. Okay, and now on to the video. So here we're gonna see um, a video of the Visco So we're going to see two videos. Here is we're showing you temperature controller, uh, which is the temperature, the control unit, and the thermal module or the part that's actually heating and cooling your sample. Okay. Sorry, the video restarted. Okay, so there you have the control unit, which is where you would change the settings and add your target temperature. Then you have your thermal module, which is what keeps your sample at the program temperature. Okay. Inside here, you're going to see that there's three different guidelines or grooves. Okay. That is for each spindle. So remember that I, we spoke about here, give me a second, that we have three different spindles. Okay. You have the A1, A2, A3 spindle. Um, you would use a different 
you would use a different guideline for each of those spindles. So the A1 spindle would be the bottom guideline, the A2 would be the top, and the A3 would be the middle. So you would add your product up until that guideline, and depending on the spindle you'll be using. So here we had uh, melted some, some chocolate. Um, the next video we're going to see is of chocolate syrup. So they look the same <laughs> because one was syrup and the one is melted chocolate. Um, but the reason I wanted to show you this video is because we're filling it up to the level of the A1 spindle because the spindle that we're going to be using today. So here, see it's filled up to the third, um, third level there, third guideline. And we're turning on the instrument and we're setting the target temperature. Uh, the Whoever was using this first, uh, sorry, before me, had the target temperature set at 30, at 60, sorry. I want to set it, set it at 40. So depending on the chocolate and depending on your, um, your internal procedures, chocolate is normally um, either tested normally yeah, at 40 C, 40 Celsius, but depending on different products, some are tested at 30 Celsius or 50 Celsius. In this occasion, we'll be testing it at 40. So here I'm setting the target temperature at 40. As you can see, the instrument has started to heat up to 40. Then what we do first is that we put in the temperature sensor in the instrument, and then we make sure that the temperature of the product is at 40. Okay. If it's not a 40, then we need to go back to the um, controller and adjust it a little until it's 40, on the, until the sample is 40, or until the sample is your target temperature. I apologize about the shaky cam. So here we have it um, hitting 40 pretty soon. And um, so in this, uh, this time, the sample's temperature is 40 and the temperature on the controller is 40. There is an example, I'm not sure if it's on the next video or if it's for a different product, where I had set it at 40, but the product only heated up to 39.8. So I had to go back to the controller and bringing it up to 40.2. So sample, my product is... 40.0 okay and once the target temperature is, is um, reached then you need to remove the temperature sensor and put in the spindle that you're going to use so we have filled up the first line because we're going to use a one spindle and this is the a1 spindle as you can see right about now the volume that we placed on the line is exactly for the spindle so it does come over a little but it doesn't spill over so make sure that you're very accurate when filling that line okay here we're turning on the instrument and we're going to put the settings settings we're going to choose a1 s a1 s is a1 spindle with the small container then here in this example, we set it at 60 RPM, but uh, let's watch the other video. It is supposed to be, well, different products have a different RPM. Um, for chocolate specifically, it is uh, either 10 or 20 RPM, most, most commonly used. Okay. Here we have the video of the chocolate syrup. And again, we're saying that we're going to use a one spindle. So same as last time. We're filling it up until up to that line. This video, the reason I want to show you this video is, is showing more of the setup um, that the previous video didn't show. And here again, we're attaching the temperature sensor. We're making sure that the chocolate is... 40. 
so yeah so this is the example where I had pre I had done testing uh, pre-testing um, and I noticed that my sample what my target temperature was 40 but my sample was not going up to 40 because um, the AC <laughs> was on in the lab so what I needed to do is I needed to change the the target temperature to 42 so that my sample um, gets to 40. So that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing the sample is at 40 but the target temperature is 42. So this controller, the target temperature, the controller is just there to adjust to give you a visual, um, visual numeric value of what you're supposed to set increase or decrease your temperature at so that your sample is the temperature you want hopefully that wasn't too confusing <laughs> but what i'm sorry what i'm trying to say is then um what's important here is the temperature of the product not this temperature that is displayed by the controller so you adjust the controller to get to the target temperature, to the sample's target temperature. Okay, and again, like I mentioned before, when the um, when the target temperature is achieved, then you remove the temperature probe, you put in the A1 spindle, and you start testing. This video, though, I made a mistake. I um, well, uh, as you can see. I set the spindle to A1S because it's A1 spindle with a small beaker but instead of putting 20 RPM I had set it to 200 RPM um, so I'll I'll edit this video again and I will um, we'll upload it on our YouTube page the correct one and you have the the results of this uh, viscometer uh, viscosity test at 20 RPM as you're supposed to do with this type of chocolate And that concludes the today's webinar about viscosity and chocolate. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to email us at overseas at otago.net. Okay. Thank you very much and have a good day.